Hello and welcome to Kathy Paints on Gen Con. Hello TV. and welcome. Every single time, every single time my Twitch goes from muted to unmute when I start streaming. Yay, tech! So today I'm still working on those Wids Kids frameworks models, the D and D frameworks. And this is the Elf Ranger that I started out on. I, I got some skin color on him. I got some hair going on him. I had been working on this guy, and we finished him last week. So, Bullwinkle, the moose. Uh, let me see if I can dial in the focus a little bit better on this guy. So, you know... Because it would be cool if people could see what I was doing. <laughs> well, hi, Gen Con TV. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. This is Bullwinkle. We finished him. We did the skin. We did the, the antlers. We finished this sort of non-metallic uh, metal effect. To, to paint in the reflections rather than using metallic paint because that's just what I'm used to, so that's what I do. And now we're going to work on uh, the ranger. Uh, I can show you what I was doing in my earlier stream today because every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I stream on my own channel, uh, Kathy Wapple. And today I was working on this orc bust. You know, I I like orcs. What can I say? And this is a guy I was working on. He's, I I got some green into the midtones on this guy. Uh, I had I had no paint on. It was just sort of this this primer, this primer. And this was like uh, about an hour and a half of work right here. I love busts. They seem to go really fast for me, depending on... Uh, sometimes they have a lot, a lot of busy little details, but this guy seems fairly simple, uh, but effective. It's a really nice sculpt. It's an old Figone model from Figone Studios uh, in France. It's all resin, solid resin. Uh, and uh, it's 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 beautifully sculpted. And these are the other two things that I'll be working on on my own stream this week. These are Raging Heroes models. They are very pretty. And uh, so those are going to be a lot of fun. But today on this stream, we're working on the Elf Ranger. And, uh, let's see, I need to mix colors, I can tell this already. I'll get some paint, some water droplets off of my palette. This is a wet palette that I'm using here, which means that there's, uh, an absorbent sponge here, and palette paper that I'm using, and it keeps, keeps my paint from drying out right away. It will dry out. At some point, it just doesn't dry out as fast as it does just on on uh, on paper or plastic or whatever palette you're using. Um, I want to up my. Uh, no, I feel like we're good where we are. On one monitor, this guy looks darker than he does on the other one, so I don't know. I need, I don't know what that was, I hit a button, something happened. I need to mix some colors. So what do we, what do we do first? I think we do his coat. He's got a coat underneath all this leather armor. At least I was thinking I would paint it like leather armor. 
But now I look at this and it... This part all looks like metal right here. Um, so I think I want to paint that like metal. And then these things are also metal. I could paint them as if they were leather armor. But it could go either way, really. So do I want to go leather armor or do I want to go metal? He is a ranger, but... I mean, that doesn't mean that he's suicidal, right? So maybe we start out with the coat here and then up here and the sleeves. And then it looks like he has bracers here with little, maybe these are metal too. And these are the important things to think about, you know, to take a look at before you start painting. Now, the question is, what color? What color? And I feel like, do we want to just go for the generic ranger green cloak? Or do we, do we throw a brown cloak? And the, and the, and his coat is green? What do we want to do? Green coat? Red? Red and green? Christmas? No. No, no, no. Uh, purple? No. Brown? Brown is so boring, though. I hate brown. I have a love-hate relationship with brown. I like browns for leathers. I like warm browns. But, uh... What about burgundy? Ooh. Green cloak, burgundy coat. These are the <laughs> these are the things I struggle with. I think we all do when we're when we're painting miniatures. There's that you get the blank canvas syndrome, and you're like, uh, I don't even know where to start. I don't know. Maybe we do a little fun border around the edge of this cloak too. I mean, I know he's a ranger, but. Why not? Why not? A fancy uh, border. So you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna go. You know the usual green ranger coat. I have green on my palette, but uh, yeah, we'll just steal that green from what I was doing earlier today. This is phthalo green. Uh, and so I'm going to mix red with it. We're going to get a, a darkish color. Why I'm going for this one, I just said I wanted to paint it green. I don't know. Because this is making it uh, maroon. So maybe his cloak wants to be maroon. I think it does. I think it just wants to be maroon. Uh, who am I? Who am I to, to get in the way of that? Well, now that we've made the shadow for that color, I feel like we need to make uh, the middle tone. We need a middle tone for that. So we need red. Well, I have red. We need more green. So you get some more green. We don't want much green. I want it to be, because it's maroon, I want it to be more red. And maybe we'll throw some magenta in there too. You know how much I love magenta. And I'm going to put some yellow in here too. This is, it's paint mixing night. We're mixing paint. And I just threw some magenta in too, cause, cause why not? I get some white in there. I need a mid tone, so it can't be super dark. And red and green make 
and it's dark. That looks like a gray brown. Does not look like a burgundy uh, mid-tone. So it's just going to be, this is going to be one of those nights, I think. We'll go green. I'm starting to think about the purple orange, but we're going to go green magenta here. Uh, I'm going to take some magenta and put a little green in it. And this makes a lovely purple. This is more like, this is more like what I was thinking of, a little bit of, sort of a, almost a wine color, as mid-tone. This is more like what I was thinking of. See how much more saturated this color is compared to this? This looks almost gray, and this has so much vivid intense color in it. So let's throw some of that on there right now. We're just going to get that in mid-tones. And the mid-tone area is is usually somewhere close to uh, your vertical surface, to me anyways, and a little bit of highlight. I am throwing it on highlights. And then the shadow areas are going to be that darker color. But I feel like the mid-tones tend to be the the more saturated areas on a model, or, well, in life, on, on any subject. And then your shadows can sometimes be saturated and intense in color, but usually they aren't. Uh, and usually your highlights, you know, the reflected light that's, you know, reflecting off of these surfaces, are going to be less saturated. And it's already looking more more sort of burgundy. We may throw some purple in here. We may throw some some more magenta into the mid tones. It kind of looks brown, but you know, that's, that's the nature of burgundy. It kind of looks brown sometimes. But we will be throwing more magenta over it, which is going to make it less brown. It's going to give it some vibrancy, some life. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the end. We'll do the edge. This is a part that that often is easy to forget. Ow, some some part of this base is poking me in the thumb. Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> we'll do the inside now. The inside of the cloak, I could do, I could do a separate color. Uh, I could make it a pattern. I could do plaid. I could do a quilted pattern. When I say I, I mean anybody who's painting it could do a pattern. I, I think it's fun to sometimes do, you know, not the same color on the inside of a cloak and 
and have that variety. And I gotta figure out how to get my my brush down in there. Age old problem. Which I have solved now. I don't know what my highlight is going to be on this. I have to remember to do the top part of this. There's like a, a hood, I guess. There's a yoke to this. So we have to remember that. And then there's fur around this. And we'll do the fur on this the same way we did the fur on the uh, Orc Barbarian, too. I suppose we could do his coat in the same color. I don't, we'll think about it. We'll we'll think about it. We'll get our darks going here. We'll get some highlights going. Hey, Fangwad, how are you? How have you been? Been doing anything interesting? Any projects on the go? Is it you who is posting the anime police? Are those models? I'm painting burgundy, and I want to see if washing this with a little bit of magenta. Oh, yeah. I did have a little too much water on my brush there. Hang on, I get so much more painting done here. Alright, I like the magenta in a few areas there. Makes it interesting. Fangwad says, I've been well, but don't get home in time for your regular stream anymore. Those were the anime police. I will have chibi versions of them soon. Oh, wow. Heriberto released the chibi version of the brunette yesterday, and she's currently being printed. Ooh. I love Heriberto's work. He does fantastic chibi models. Ooh, I can show you what I did earlier today because you weren't there to distract me I actually got painting done today I did stuff so there's this orc bust that I've been working on oh I did notice that I managed to get a line of paint right here after the stream was over I was looking at it and I'm like oh it's just this line of purple that goes right down the uh, this part, which is no big deal because we still haven't done any shading or highlighting on this part, so there's a lot left to do. That can easily be fixed. He is fierce, isn't he? Look at he has freckles on his face. It looks like the start of a tattoo. <laughs> it could be a tattoo, I guess. I could throw a tattoo on there. Just that would actually be fun. 
He can kind of balance out the great big chunky armor on his other shoulder. What would it be though? What kind of what kind of tattoo would it be? What kind of tattoo would an orc have? Hmm. And what should my what should my highlight color be on this? Burgundy. Should it be a yellowy kind of a thing? Do I need more yellow on my palette? Or should it be like a burgundy or a... Hold on. Not burgundy. No, it should be a magenta yellow. Some yellow. I need... I have magenta out here, but it's kind of dying. I need more. Yeah. This might work. Maori looking stuff is cool. Hmm. Is that the... Hmm. Oh shoot, I didn't want more yellow. I wanted more... Uh, magenta. There we go. More magenta. Even more magenta. Here I was saying that I wanted less saturation in my highlights. And what am I doing? Adding magenta. Well, we'll be adding white to it. So that's going to desaturate it. That is going to mute it right down. And then, I'm going to move this whole color over here. It's really, it looks like a skin tone that I'm making. Weird how some colors can can be good for a skin tone or for uh, a highlight of purple or, or burgundy, as we're doing here. So I just added some green to this. because I didn't want my highlight to be super bright. Super, I didn't want it to be saturated, is what I'm trying to say. But that's a little too light in value, I think. So you need it to be a little darker. A touch more green, just a touch. Well, the only way to find out how this is going to be is to put it on the model now. What if I... what if blue, though? What if just blue? What if blue is a highlight? Um... Blue and a little magenta. What about that? That could be an interesting highlight. There's not much of it, so I gotta work fast. Hey, Bill Robertson. Uh, hi, Kathy. Why is this stream in board games? Silly Gen Con. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, probably because there's no appropriate category for miniature painting. Aside from art. And art's very generic. So I mixed that other color and then I ended up using this sort of lavender color for my uh for my highlights. We're just blocking in highlights right now. We can we can smooth our transitions later. We're just finding where these highlights are going to go. Generally, that's the highlights are going to go on uh, 
things that are facing up, facing the, the sky, the sun, wherever our light source is, and usually I'm painting the light sources as the sun as if they're outside. For gaming pieces like this, it's it's easier. You get fancy and do uh and and have your own light sources and make really fun reflected light. That that is a thing that can happen, and it is fun. Now I'm just finding these places that I feel like the light would be reflecting off and I'm getting this value into those places. And if I feel like I got carried away with my highlights, like I often do, it's very easy for me with the colors on my palette to, to do some kind of a glaze over them to tone this down. Because it is easy to get carried away doing highlights. How is Bill Robertson tonight? What are you up to? What are you up to, Bill? Paint minis? Are you painting along? Maybe? You just got done working. Oh, you're decompressing. Okay. Well, relax. Take it easy. Hey, Wolf Parable. How are you tonight? Painting a totally different thing tonight. We finished the, uh, the Orc Barbarian last week. And so we're continuing on this guy, which I did start at the same time as I started the Orc Barbarian, but then the Orc Barbarian sort of consumed all my attention until it was done. So now this guy is getting some love. We're giving him just a hint of highlights right here. There's that one pesky, there's this, there's this group of like two, three bristles here that gets dry paint on it for some reason. Or else maybe it just never gets clean, I don't know. At any rate, they always separate from the rest of them and it kind of drives me nuts. <laughs> How far are I in with this one? I have painted, well, I did my half as Zenithal on it, just like I did on, on this guy, and on her. I did, I did the priming on all of them and the half as Zenithal all at the same time, so... Uh, but I've only put color on the cloak on this guy so far, and his hair, and his skin. Well, his skin is pretty much done. Uh, in pictures, the skin looks a lot chunkier than it does uh, when I look at it like this. 
The hair is almost done. I may do more to it. I may leave it like that. Uh, but I'm just blocking in some mid-tones and some lights here. And then I'm going to throw some shadows in. And then I'm going to put some more mid-tones in there. I was I was trying to think what would be a good highlight for a burgundy color and uh, I couldn't picture it so this is what I came up with I like it but it doesn't seem like a highlight for burgundy still It still seems like a fun color combo, though. So we're keeping it. We're keeping it. Now we're going to do some, some glazing anyways in the mid-tones. Once we get the shadows in, we're going to go back into the mid-tones and do some more work in the mid-tones. But I have to remember to do the front of this cape, the inside of it. <laughs> Thank you. Wolf Parable says nice work turned out great. Thanks. He was a lot of fun. These uh these are the WizKids D and D frameworks models and uh you know to be honest I wasn't sure how they would be to paint up you know to assemble and to paint they they went together really easily and uh you know I could use plastic glue on them which is what I was hoping I was hoping because I knew they were plastic but plastic glue doesn't work on every kind of plastic but this is that that good kind of plastic that you know you can use plastic glue on so so that's nice to know I'm just picking out areas where I feel like there might be there, like there's not a highlight underneath here. I'm just taking artistic license now at this point, and I may go over these highlight areas with my midtone, so they'll have a hint of highlight, but not actual highlight. <laughs> Little edge highlight for artistic license here. What about here? What about this? Is there going to be a highlight here? There's going to be a mid-tone highlight there. Wolf Parable says, so far, what I've seen from you, they look really solid, but that could be the paint jobs making them look good. I mean... I am not doing extra work to them, you know, and usually when a model is subpar, it means I have to do more work to make it look good, which, you know, isn't worth my time, you know, it's not worth my time to spend more time to make a hideous model look average. You know, <laughs> as opposed to making a good model look better. Uh, so these models are, they're really cool. They're fun. They they convey D&D, &D, you know, they, they represent classes. They're, 
you know, a bit generic. You know, you have Orc Barbarian, you have Elf Ranger, but they have a bunch of other ones that are that are coming out. These are just their first. These were their first four. I also have the Hill Giant. I have the Hill Giant over here. Hold on. Let me just let me just swing this way. This is the Hill Giant. I will show you. I will get this sprue out so you can see the Hill Giant. I had been thinking about doing the assembly for this one on this stream so that people could see how they fit together. So is this is this as sharp in detail, like is the fur as sharp in detail as the Games Workshop? Not really. It's also not bad. I've I've seen way worse. This fur looks nice. And once it's painted up it's gonna look better. And if you're dry brushing it on, it doesn't matter who you are, it's going to look good. So, there's the, there's the inside of the pieces. But here's his, here's his tummy. And this is going to be fun. This is just going to be fun. You know, the, the details are, are a bit more basic. But I find that less is more really makes things easier to paint. Not like GW where, you know, do I like their models? Yes. I like my GW models. But sometimes they get carried away with the details. Sometimes they get a little detail happy. And they want to take in, in their ZBrush that they're using to digitally sculpt their models they want to add everything that they don't have to sculpt again. They can go, oh, here's a cup. I'm just going to paste this cup here, and I'm just going to distort it a little bit so it looks different. And it's super easy, and I don't have to do a lot of work. And now we're going to put more details on this thing, and more details, and more details, until it's so busy. So busy. There's no place for the eye to rest. And uh, just like in regular two-dimensional art, that's the thing that matters in 3D art, too. But I might just be ranting. <laughs> oh, the belly button, right, Phil? He's cool. Now, Jim said, my husband, he said he heard... Uh, that people were having problems fitting them together. Now I've only put together two of these. They went together great. I didn't have any problem with gaps or anything. Uh, this guy's this guy's arm went on right here, right here. And this is a this is the two hand thing. So his wrist his wrist glues onto this arm, right? Or his hand glues onto this wrist. And then his other arm glues on right here. And you know, you know when you have two handed weapons and you try to attach those to a model, how tricky that can be? It was not tricky on this guy, and there were no gaps. I didn't have to fill anything on this. So I call that, I call that just fine. If I don't have to get the green stuff out, and fill gaps on something. That's two thumbs up for ease of assembly. <laughs> the shun the two-handed weapons. What, Bill Robertson? What? Nonsense. I love the two-handed weapons. They put the smack down. I mean, currently, I. That being said, currently I have a fighter that has. Uh, a, just a martial weapon and a shield and she has uh, god what's that feat that gives you the plus AC if you're you know using only a shield and a if you're using one handed weapon in one hand god damn it <laughs> uh, 
uh, duelist, I think. Uh, yeah. Duelist? No, not a feat. It's not a feat. It's a fighter, uh, fighter ability. Yes, I may be talking about a D and D character here on Gen Con TV. Cause, cause no one here plays D and D, right? Charlie the Unicorn reference. Bill. Bill, I don't know what Charlie the Unicorn is. Uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, Charlie is a Charlie in the box, and that's it. That's it's the only Charlie I know. Nobody wants a Charlie in the box. <laughs> oh, great, Bill. Yes, DM me. I'm sure I won't regret it. <laughs> no, that'll be fine. I'm sure I, I'm actually sure I won't regret it. All right, now let's throw some uh, shadows down in here. And then we'll go back uh, after that and return to the mid-tones. Look at the shadows. You know what? Shadows go down deep in the crevices. Deep in the recesses. Where the Balrogs live. Deep. And because these are Reaper paints, uh, as I put a layer of my shadow on here, I know that once it dries and I put another layer of my shadow color over it, it will appear to be even darker and more saturated because that's how these paints work. They, they get more opaque, which means that the pigment gets more concentrated, which makes it more saturated. And anything that's a dark value seems to be even darker. I say it seems to be even darker, but that's just because the concentration of pigment is building up. And so that color, which already is a darker value, is going to look darker uh, the more thin layers are applied of it. And that's one of the properties of these clear paints that I don't find in a lot of other miniature paints. Well, I don't find them in artist acrylics either. They're, they're actually pretty unique. And, and I really enjoy those qualities. Now I'm, now I'm doing a thin glaze of this color over some of my uh, my highlight areas like right here on these vertical wrinkles where I did a highlight now I'm, I'm just toning it down by adding just a little uh, translucent glaze of this color into it and it's also causing that transition to seem a bit smoother uh, as if it was blended. And then I pause 
to concentrate on my painting. Crazy, I know. Did you just go off to search for Charlie the Unicorn Bill? I will look at it as soon as I'm done. All right, so I have my midtone color here still, so we're gonna we're gonna throw a little bit of that on here. Glaze that into that where that highlight is. We just toned this highlight down a little. Uh, do I want to do that? Do I want to do that midtone anywhere else? Do I need to boost my shadows here a little bit more? I feel like I need to boost my shadows here a little bit more. So we're just going to go and put a shadow here and then glaze it with uh, just a damp brush. And when I say glaze it with a damp brush, I mean I'm rinsing uh, all the paint off the brush and blotting the excess water out of it on this paper towel. And then I go in with just the damp brush and, uh, and I spread out the color that I just applied. But you have to do it really fast, you'll and you learn that you you eventually get a rhythm, you get a knack for it, because if you don't do it fast enough, it's just going to not dry and leave uh, little watermarks. Where it'll look rougher, in which case you know you can you can go back and. You know, and work on it again. You can still work on it more to get that smoothness. Is there? Is this totally dry? <laughs> I'm like, is there anything left of this highlight color? A little bit. I just wanted to return with the highlight color on a couple places. Speaking of smoothing things out, uh, it works better to smooth things out from dark to light usually than it does from light to dark uh, and I think that's because of the uh, the white pigment in the lighter in the lighter mixes Oh, see, I knew I was going to forget the yolk. I forgot to do the the shading on the yolk. Uh the yolk of the yolk of the cloak. It's so easy to forget that this is part of the cloak. The uh, the fur is less fluffy on on this side and on that side as it gets to the front here it gets a little I don't know the detail of the fur just sort of takes a dive.
Alright. We got some good shadow underneath his hair, the top of the cloak. Do I need to do a, a watery glaze of this color? Maybe just a little right there. Maybe just a little right here. Maybe a little bit on the front. I'm, I'm iffy on some of the details on the front of the uh, uh, this thing. It, it just seems to, I don't know. Not as good on the front. Ooh, I didn't do my darks on the uh, inside of the cloak either. Wow. It's like you forgot how to paint. Hey, J.D. Wiker. Wolf Parable says, oh, I meant to ask, are these D&D fellows available or not yet? J.D. Wiker says, yes, they are, at least in the United States. He should know. They, um... Uh, yeah, just Google them. They're WizKids Frameworks. WizKids Frameworks D&D models. And it should come up. It should come up somewhere. That's, that's where, that's where the hill giant and stuff came from. All these, that's where, that's where these are from. Yeah, D&D Frameworks. We were just talking about these. Vlieger Dragon says, can I Google Kathy Wapple? <laughs> At your own peril, Vlieger Dragon. At your own peril, do you Google Kathy Wapple? <laughs> Hi, V. How's V this evening? What are you up to? What fun things are you doing? I am looking forward to Thursday V. The Leaguer Dragon and I usually play D and D on Thursday nights, but we don't have D and D this Thursday, so. We are going to play Valheim together, and we're just gonna we're gonna kill gray dwarves and trolls, and we're gonna get copper, and we're gonna make bronze, because that's what Vikings do, right? In addition to planting carrot seeds endlessly. V, do you have beehives? Did you get bees? I don't remember. I need to go in with my mid-tone and tone down uh, a little bit of this right here. That's a little bright. This is a little bright. This is a little bright. This is the underside of the cloak, so my lightest highlights should not be on the underside of the cloak, where it's facing down away from the light. I should not have my lightest highlights down there. But, as you can see, when I just do a thin glaze of my mid-tone color over that, it is a lot lighter where I painted those highlights than if I hadn't have painted them at all right there. Which is huge. And that's why I did it.
Beast says, I play video games and looking forward to Thursday. And yes, she has a beehive. <laughs> she has bees. She has bees. Bees are important in Valheim. They give you honey. But they only give you honey if you make a beehive. And you have to go find the bees. <laughs> and then make a beehive. And then get your honey. Get your honey, honey. I'm going to tone down a few of these uh, highlights over here, too. I feel like that has gotten a little out of hand, so we're going to tone that down. We're going to tone this down. And we're going to bring that down. We're going to tone this down a little bit more here. There we go. I feel better about this. So that looks a lot smoother now, right? And uh, I'm reminded now to Look at the the uh, to look at the top part, the yolk. Just look at this part. I I don't really like that. I don't know what's going on here. the The wrinkles there seem to disappear. I have to try and find them again. I don't know what happened to them. I will find them. I have to look really close. And then on this side, where, where are they? I know they're there. I, I painted over them. See? Now they don't make sense. Here we go. All right. Okay, I feel better about. Okay, I feel better about that now. <laughs> if if recovered. <laughs> Actual bees in a beehive hairdo. Yes, Bill, that's exactly what we mean. The League of Dragon says I have a bunch of other bees. We can make more beehives. Oh, ice cream. Oh, I would like ice cream. I will have ice cream when I finish. I have Heath bar. I have Heath Crunch bars. You know those Heath Crunch ice cream bars? I love those. Jim got those for me. Okay, so I feel like the cloak is done. Uh, so we're going to move on to his coat. His coat here. And I think I'm just going to make... Uh, I don't want to make it blue. No, I want to make it blue. I want to make it blue. Why do I want to make it blue? Yep, blue. Here I was struggling, and now that his cape is this color, I want his cloak to be blue. Or cape, coat. His coat. I want his coat to be blue. Yes, bleen. Yeah, it might be bleen. It may be bleen. It will for sure be blue, though. 
I have blue on my palette. Let's move some blue over here. Uh, and I want to start with the mid-tone blue color. So, and I feel like I maybe need some red on the palette. And my white is, my white is lumpy, so I need to put some new white on the palette too. Lean good, grew bad. Yes. Gru is bad. You do not want to make Gru because then you might get eaten. Nobody wants to be eaten by a Gru. Alright, squeezing off a little bit of my titanium white. Uh, this is the one artist acrylic that I use is the titanium white because I can mix I usually am only mixing a tiny bit of this into another color, so it doesn't matter that it starts out super thick. And I'm just taking a little bit of it to mix with my blue so I can make a mid-tone color. And it's going to be pretty. And, uh, yeah. I need more blue and more white and it's going to be pretty. This white goes a long way though. So yeah, I'm going to make a big old pile of blue. and Maybe I'll use some of it tomorrow <laughs> when I'm painting. Um, I don't know. I think tomorrow I will work on, I'll probably work on her some more. Uh, which requires bleen, blue-green, uh, or I might work on her. Uh, I need to do more, a little bit more to the skin, um, and I need to do something with the hair. The hair is like just mid-toned. I want the hair to be white. She's going to be sort of a dark elf. Or, anyway, she's going to have white hair. But she's got this fabulous dragon, and... Uh, her cloak sort of matches the dragon a little bit. I was trying something new with colors on that. I like to I like to experiment with trying new things. So oftentimes I don't know whether something is gonna turn out because I'm trying something new for the first time usually. Alright, so my mid-tone. Do do I need I just wanna do straight up blue. What do we got here? I've got red. You know what? Maybe I throw some red in there. Because I do I do have red in the cloak and you know you know what we say. If uh if the color goes somewhere it must go everywhere. So we're gonna squirt some red out on the palette. Let me give this a good shake. Ooh, that's too much red, I think. I think that's too much red. Maybe not. So this red is it leans a little more toward orange. Uh so when I mix it with this blue, it will it tends to dull it down a little bit rather than make purple. It tends to just desaturate it a little bit, and that's what I was hoping for. It's making it I don't know if it's the, it seems like a slightly darker value as well, but uh, what it's doing is dulling it down, so it's more of a, almost a gray blue. Then I can build up saturation uh, in the shadows if I want to, or I could go ahead and do saturated highlights, but usually my highlights are desaturated, and I explained that earlier. At any rate, We've got some blue, and we're going to put it on this guy. Uh, weirdly, these are similar colors to uh, his skin tone.
so yeah, just uh, drawing this overall. Let's see, is this more, is this a leather strap here? Or is that part of his coat? I feel like that's a leather strap. And I am totally painting this part like uh, like he has a shirt, a coat that goes all the way up his neck. Because, because that's how I want to. And you can't stop me. On the other hand, if it turns out after the paint dries that this part looks like, you know, his bare chest, but why would it be? Then I can repaint it. But I'm still going to go with it looks like a coat. Oh, I was going to, I was going to do a neat little border on the edge of that. Uh, on the edge of the cloak. And there's still plenty of time to do that. This border on the coat here made me think of it because there is a a bit of a border around this. It kind of gets lost on this side. On that side it's easy to see. On this side it seems to uh, get lost in a wrinkle. Fabric wrinkle. And the inside of it is going to be white. It's going to be linen on the inside. So, well, it'll be an off-white. It'll be like a dirty white. Dirty. It'll be so dirty. Because he is a ranger after all. He's bound to have grass stains. Oops, I got blue on my border. That's fine. I'll you know just paint I'll just paint over that. It's not the end of the world, right? Not the end of the world. Um and I think his coat comes out the bottom of the his bracer bracers I think maybe or not maybe not maybe only on the inside uh well there's glue on that part we'll just put some blue right here this is so this this sword and hand, the ha the hilt and the hand, uh, and the sword is a separate piece. Well, this sword is a paper clip because they broke the sword. Uh, <laughs> Why would I want to stop you? Says the blue your dragons. <laughs> You can't stop me. No one can. Mm, ginger lemon tea. Hot. Alright, I'm liking the blue. Because that's a good color. These are good colors. What is my, uh... What is my trim color going to be, though? Oh no, yellow? Green? Burgundy? Hmm. Black? Not black? Almost black? How about we go with almost black? I'm a big fan of almost black. 
I'm just going to paint almost flat down there. And then the inside is going to be uh, that off-white color, which in the shadows will be dark gray. I would bottle a color that's almost black, except that I use different colors in it every time I make almost black. I think this almost black is blue and red and magenta. This is the same color I used for the uh, the shading on the uh, cloak. And when I get a dark color like that, I will use it for a number of things on a model. I'll use it for all the shading for for some parts, not for all parts, but sometimes you want a dark line uh, in between two areas to separate the areas like from the bracer to the to the coat. I'll probably do an extra dark color just to define that area. Oh, oh I'm doing the inside of it right. That's right. That's right. I'm going to use some of my, uh, my slightly chunkier white. It's off white, which is perfect. We'll go in with that, and then we'll... And we'll go in and make those darks darker. I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm leaving a little bit of uh, shadow area. and then it'll be easier to make that darker shadow if I put a, this lighter color down there. <sighs> Breathe in. Should his, should his britches also be blue? Or should they just be brown? Or should they be khaki? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> Bill Robertson says Blagenta for trim, or Orangenta. Oh, God, what was the one? What did Fangwad say? He was here earlier. What was that color? It was, it was like a brown. It was... Oh, what was it? It sounded terrible, but we knew. It was the perfect name to describe brown. Grorange. It was Grorange. <laughs> it was the green orange that I was using for the goblin bust. It was Grorange. We used uh we used a lot of Grorange on this skin to make that green. On this guy. Yeah, so that was uh phthalo green and orange. Grorange. <laughs> and that was the word. And I was like, oh, that's an awful word. <laughs> but it's perfect for, you know, for what it is. Yeah, green orange, depending on how you mix it, will look an awful lot like baby poop. That is no lie. But I feel like I, I maybe need grorange uh, britches on this guy. I think he needs grorange britches. Or does he need black britches? Should just be black. And by black, I mean uh, almost black. 
Yeah, we'll just do almost black britches too. Why not? Why not? Ooh, can't go too low there. There's a boot. All right, uh, okay, boot, and then and then little leather straps, and then armor. I'm just figuring out my the boot. Is boot gonna be black too? I think you know what? Why not? Why not just make that also be black? Yeah. Why not? We'll make that be almost black also. Sometimes, uh, sometimes simplicity is key. Where are we at? I have to finish this base too. This uh, I painted the I painted part of the base, but I can see as I look at it up close. But I I never finished it. And there's a lot of glossy parts to it, which means I used some kind of glossy wash, which I hate. So yeah, I'll have to fix that. I have this weird French techno song in my head. This is like some pop French pop song from the 1990s. And and I don't even know exactly what the words are, but in my head I can hear them, but I don't know what they actually are. <laughs> Bill Robertson says Bone Six unlocked Charandar today. I don't what's is that a dragon? Is is Charandar a dragon? Do I need to paint black straps on this? Is all my leather going to be black? No, no, my leather's not going to be black. It's going to be brown. Because uh, my my metal is going to be like a blue black. It's going to be reflecting all this blue onto it. So, yeah. Also a little bit of a white highlight. Do a couple places down here. There really shouldn't be super white highlights down there, even though it's white. And then we go in with ooh, this gray color that we mixed is perfect for a shadow. Maybe it's a little dark. Maybe it's a little dark. Let me mix it in with this. That'll be perfect. Yes, very nice looking dragon. It's a dragon. The Dargon. V, when did you make the transformation from Dargon to Gremlin? I'd like to know. I feel like when I first met you, you were a Dargon, but now you're a Gremlin. I don't know when that transformation took place.
Yes, there. Now, you know what, we'll fill a little, a little tiny bit of a, a white highlight again. I have lint in my brush somehow. There's a little tiny white highlight here. And then a little bit right there. And a little down here. So, so that looks white, but it's not really white, white, super, it's not super white. A darglin. I don't, I don't know, uh, either, Bill. I don't know if, uh, uh, Gen Con TV is link friendly. I would guess not. I would guess probably not. Which would be smart. V says the Dargan emotes I had were drawn by someone I prefer not to associate. Oh, okay. Fair. That's fair. I like your. You know what? I love your wavy emote, that pink pink monster that just stands there and waves. I love that. Yes, I love that one. He's so cute. He's so cute. All the cute. Alright, I'm going to use this gray to highlight my almost black trim on the coat. See, this is what I like about these colors on my palette and I that I that I mix and use for one thing. I can also use them for something else. Like I used this as a shadow for my white, but now I'm using it as a highlight for my almost black. And what that does is it ties together the whole color scheme of the model when you do things like that. You know how you, you sometimes hear people talk about the the harmony of colors in a painting or on a model or something and and uh, often you can get that harmony by just using a a simple palette of colors a limited palette of colors and uh, just figuring out new ways to use them on the model. Now I, I have to write down the colors I used today so that I remember for, for the next time I have to remember I used red and yellow and magenta and phthalo green and uh, blue and I haven't I haven't put any orange in there I don't feel like it needs any and so those are four colors plus white I I think of white as just a it's not really a color it's just something I mix with colors the D is silent. Arglin. <laughs> Arglin. A Gremgon. Gremlins are cute. Okay. Oh, uh... In addition to the the highlight on the the trim, um, I need to use the same highlight on his pants, on his trousers. Because of course I do, because they're black. And his boots. 
which are also black, which also need highlights. Of course, of course. Ooh, there's a mold line that I forgot. That I, well, I didn't forget it, I just didn't see it. I missed that mold line. Uh, they're, they're pretty clean models as far as mold lines go. Uh, but there are a few, and I missed that one. I do that sometimes on shoes and boots when there's a lot of straps. I sometimes miss them. I did on uh, on the the thing I won an award for uh, painting award, and I got a silver. And I feel like ooh, I saw it in the case, my figure while the convention was going, and I spotted a mold line, and I was like, oh, oh no, I will win nothing. And then I got silver, and so I feel like. Ooh, I could have gotten a gold if only, if only, no, no, <laughs> best not to think about it that way. Bleager Dragon says, I would like to give Kathy a painting award. Oh, well, thank you, V. This guy, this guy needs more contrast, he needs, he needs me to finish the blue cloak. Kathy will win it every year. I don't know, V. There are other painters out there that, that are also deserving. So now I need green and red and magenta. That's going to be my dark color, green and red and magenta. I'm going to add extra magenta because why not? It makes it purple. V says maybe one year I will let Jim win. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. The award is for being the best Wapple. Oh! But, okay, so you're the one awarding it. The best Wapple. Best Wapple award. Well, thank you. I mean, I feel like Jim's okay, too. He should be a contender. Alright, so I have my... I have my new dark color. It's pr more purple than my other color, and this will be for my blue. So I'm going to find all the wrinkles. All the places where you think there's shadows. Uh, which will also be right around this armor. And you can see how that armor is already starting to kind of stand out with just that little bit of dark color around it. That's some of that contrast we talk about. And it's important on models that are this small to have areas of contrast like that. It's it's exaggerated from real life. But if you don't do that, there will be all these details on models that that's never going to get seen.
then you want you want to bring out the details in your models. Somebody sculpted all those details in there. Somebody somewhere meant for them to be seen. I can also glaze this over, but we will wait to glaze until we get highlights put in here too. So we'll get our, our, our duller highlights in. Then we'll go back in with our blue color and this dark color and we'll glaze that in there in, in thin layers just to subdue a little bit of the uh, the uh, highlights, brain freeze there, highlights. Okay, well that was quick, that was quick, now we can highlight, so we're going to bring extra contrast to this. Bill says, I could have been a contender. I could have been a contender, but nah, I didn't want to change names. See, I, I get that. I get that reference. All right. Blue, not green, blue, oh, well, there's my blue, so I could my blue go on the palette. Did I use all the blue off? No, 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 I didn't. I'm going to put a little bit of red in, a little bit of red in it, more red, come on. So I have blue and red, but it's mostly white. I feel like it's a little too light. Now that would be too dark if I used all that blue. I thought blue would overpower the white, but the white is just really crazy strong. Here we go. It's got a little bit of red in this blue. And it kind of desaturates it a little bit. Just like with our mid-tone. I'm going to pretend like there's... Uh, 
details in here that I can see. But I really can't see anything in here. I'm just faking it. <laughs> All right, looking good so far. So the Friday reading stream, uh, on my own channel. I've been, I, every Friday, instead of painting miniatures, I read out loud uh, fiction from the, usually, it's from the early 1900s, but I read War of the Worlds, which is technically from, you know, 1898, and last week I started reading Treasure Island, which I have never read before, and wow, <laughs> it was interesting. I... Like, I had heard of Treasure Island for years, and I'm like, oh, it's a classic, okay, whatever. But as I was reading it out loud last week, I really got interested in it, and I wanted to keep reading. And so I kind of can't wait until this Friday when I can see what happens uh, with poor, poor Jim Hawkins. <laughs> who is, is sort of being dragged on this crazy mission and and the Lord is uh, just a little bit too uh, over-enthusiastic about finding treasure and jeopardizes everyone by basically hiring a pirate crew to... Uh, to to man his voyage to man the ship that he wants to go look for this treasure this pirate treasure and so these pirates all know they know what's what and so now I just have to see how it all plays out but yeah you know there's a reason the classics are classics it would seem All right, so I need uh, more of my mid-tone here. Well, I'm a Casca. What, what kind of headset glasses are you using? Well, welcome in, Wamakaska, first of all. And the, the headset I'm using, uh, this is just a Razer uh, speaker microphone, but my visor, my, uh, my visor is just like a $10, uh, it's like the cheapest magnifier visor. If you go to Amazon, for instance, or the Googles, and put in magnifier visor, you'll find a ton of different ones, but this one is probably the cheapest one there is. <laughs> uh, and, and that's kind of all I need right now. Also, the feature I like it most for is it goes up and down uh, so that I can read the chat when I'm streaming. <laughs> 
that's that's my main feature when I'm streaming and I wear my other headset. I can't raise and lower the visor, so there's no way that I could be able to uh to read the streams or read the chats. <laughs> there are other better ones out there. Okay, so mid tone do we wanna just go do we just wanna mix just some plain blue. So I do need more blue on the palette, as it turns out. Ooh, need to shake that up. My blue was almost empty and also cakey and dry, so I put a little bit of I put a little bit of glazed medium in it to kinda and water to kinda thin it down and kinda get the rest of it out of there because I'm cheap. There we go. And so air bubbles came out. Like that's that's not gonna work. I need more than just air bubbles. I need blue. Blue and some red. Okay, maybe okay, maybe a little bit of white. Ooh, that's dark. But mostly blue. I just wanted to use this as a glaze. I don't want it to be super dark. So I'm going to water it down a bit. And by that I mean I'm going to go to my little water reservoir that you see on my palette here. Which also is, I mean, it's, it's a bottle cap. But I put water in it. And uh, it's easier for me to just dip my the tip of my brush in this and I can kind of control just how how much water gets in the bristles and and now I'll just use this to smooth out some of these areas You uh, know, the important thing is when I when I put paint on the model here, sometimes what I'm intending to do is go back and thin it. And what I do is I rinse my brush out really fast, and I blot the excess water out of it. And then I just go in with just the damp brush, and I move the paint around on the surface of the model that way. And that will... That will sometimes thin the paint. It will it will make parts of it uh, thinner and and leave part. If I leave part of it alone, then you know that part will be thicker. It'll be more opaque. Here I'm just going to flood it with some water. I just want to tone down my highlights underneath there underneath the cape because I don't think that those highlights are would actually be as bright as they were but I knew that if I put this color over the top of them and then just sort of brush away some of the excess paint you know I would still get a highlight in there but not one that's too light And we'll do we'll do the same thing up here with these sleeves. See the underside of the sleeves is just getting a little bit of this blue. Well, I'm leaving the upper part of the sleeves alone because I want that brighter highlight on the upper part of the sleeve. And then, you know, I don't know what's going on up in this, uh, up by his neck in this area. Just, just thin that down a little bit and tone that down. And, you know, now he's got a little bit more color. It's distinctively blue. I'm 
I feel like uh, I can take some of this other mid-tone color, my original mid-tone, and put that in there. Uh, and then thin the edge of it out. Uh, partly what we're doing when we when we dip that brush in water and then put it on the model is we're thinning an edge out. Hey Legionnaires! How's Legionnaires tonight? Welcome in! Where else can I put this, uh, what else can I do on the coat? I feel like there's, there's something, ooh. Back there, I didn't even, it's still my primer color. So I gotta, I have to jab the, <laughs> the brush in there somehow. And get my, uh, get my blue color on there. It wasn't even blue. doesn't want to be blue either. There we go. That was interesting. I have too much water on my brush. Sometimes you get too much water on the brush and uh... And you just flood areas you didn't intend to, so, you know, you can rinse the brush off and then just immediately go back before it dries on the model and remove it. Um, you don't have to worry too much about screwing things up, you know, knowing that you can go back and do that. The only time there's a problem is if you don't notice that you've done that. Like, uh, for instance, for instance, on this guy that I was painting earlier today, after I was done with my stream, I picked him up and I went, oh, I went, oh, what's this? What is this streak of color? Just, uh, so, so yeah, I had color on my brush and I must have just done this while I was turning it around and so now I have this line here which the skin isn't finished so you know there's plenty of time for me to fix that it's not a big deal it's just a little disappointing <laughs> Legionnaire says I'm just waiting on a Kickstarter to end after watching all of James's Lord of the Rings streaming I found a campaign that's doing STLs for Easterlings and and Krant proxies y it could make it a scar uh somebody else fangwad suggested it should be a tattoo maybe and i like the idea of uh of it being a tattoo maybe um like it would be part of a tattoo that's lower down on his arm but it would be the, like the top part that you could see maybe but i don't know what kind of a tattoo would it just be you know, horns of a... Uh, it could just be some random geometric shape and some dots or something that just looks like a tattoo. I don't know. Mom? <laughs> Heart mom with an arrow through it. Right? Perfect. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, maybe it has to be that. Yeah, it would be further down on his bicep, and he doesn't have a bicep. But it could be the top of a, a heart. We could do this. We could. We could. We can make something happen here. We have the power. Um, right now I'm just fixing this guy's mid-tone areas, so, yeah. Uh, 
And then, and then tomorrow I'm playing D&D. &D. And then Thursday I'm playing Valheim with friends in my friend's world. And that'll be fun. Wow, this, this trim that I did with the dark... Remember I said I was using a dark color? My almost black. And I used it here, but it doesn't look almost black. It, this looks gray, so I'm painting over it. Again. I'm, and this time I'm painting over it with the purple that I used uh, as my shadow for my blues. Because, you know, it's also almost black. the underside of this. How did I never paint that? Okay. Okay, I feel better about this now. Get a little dark uh, separation around some of these areas. I already did that down here. We need that around this bracer though. And then we're going to do leather and steel next week. But I feel like we're pretty much done for the evening. And gosh, we really accomplished quite a bit. He looks like he's almost done. Yay! Looks like he's almost done! And look at him next to his friend now. He all of a sudden doesn't look quite so tiny next to him to me. Like, this color on him just makes him look bigger somehow. It's weird how that works. These two guys, they're ready to go out. Rocky and Bullwinkle. They're ready to go out and kick some butt. They're gonna kick butt and take names. They're gonna chew bubble gum and then something, I don't know. Yeah, and they're all out of gum. Because, I don't know. So, <laughs> so we're done for the evening. And then next Tuesday, next Tuesday, if, if I get certain new models, I may be painting those. I'm not sure. And I will, I will finish him offline if that's the case. Otherwise, I will finish him next week. Well, gonna finish. We'll try and finish him next week. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. I think I can say. Can I say that? I don't know. If I can't, pretend I didn't. Uh, same Gen Con time, same Gen Con channel. We'll be here every Tuesday night painting miniatures. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I keep thinking I'm about to do a raid. I'm about to raid somebody else because there's all these other miniature painters that are streaming right now. But I won't be doing that because reasons. And instead, I will just give a big thank you to everybody for hanging out and watching me tonight working on this elf ranger i gotta remember like it's the elf ranger from the whiz kids D, D frameworks line uh thank you and good night everybody